What's up guys, welcome back. Lately I've been focused on taking classic recipes and finding ways to take them to the next level. And when you think about appetizers, nothing's more classic than spinach dip. So today I'm gonna show you how to make restaurant quality spinach dip right from the comfort of your own home. But before we get into the recipe, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, let's take a look at these ingredients. Obviously you can't have spinach dip without the spinach. We got some bacon that's gonna help enhance the flavor a little bit, give it a little different twist. Obviously if you don't eat bacon, you can leave it out. We got some sour cream, some garlic, some artichoke hearts. Very classic with a spinach and artichoke dip, obviously. One of my favorite flavor enhancers, which is this bar uh, Borzen garlic and herb cheese. We've got our cream cheese, mozzarella, parsley, and one onion. Another way to elevate the classic at home is to make your own tortilla chips, guys. It's super easy, way better than the store-bought stuff, and just takes this recipe over the top. All right, so in our Dutch oven or skillet, we're gonna add some bacon to a cold skillet. That way it has time to render that fat a lot of these recipes begin with butter, so instead of that, we're using bacon fat today. So we're gonna let this start in a cold skillet, that way we have optimal fat rendering. Let's kinda of break these little pieces apart here. And just give it some time to cook. You don't wanna cook it too fast. Put the heat on medium or so, and just let it do its thing. So right here, guys, you just wanna use your spatula to kinda of move it around, make sure the bacon's cooking evenly. Let it render some of that fat. This is uh, center cut bacon, which is a little thinner, a little lower fat content, so it's not gonna be too greasy for this recipe. So just keep that in mind. If you're using like a thick cut bacon or something that's got a heavy fat content, you might wanna drain a little bit of the fat so you don't have a greasy spinach dip. But it's really a judgment call as you can make depending on the bacon that you're using. So once the bacon gets nice and crispy, we're gonna remove it. We're about 75% of the way there right now. Let this crisp up a little bit more. Allow a little bit more fat to render to cook our onions and artichokes and spinach. All right, so once we remove the bacon, we're going in with the onion. And we're just gonna let that onion kind of absorb some of that bacon fat and start to saute, cook down, get nice and tender. Immediately the house is smelling good. Not much smells better in the world than onions and garlic and some bacon grease. And speaking of garlic, once the onions get a head start, we're going in with about a tablespoon of that. All right, so once the onions get a head start, in goes a tablespoon of garlic paste or fresh garlic, minced garlic, whatever you got. We'll get the job done. We're gonna mix that in, add our artichokes, and then add in the spinach as well. All right, so right now we got some artichokes, we got onion, we got garlic. We're gonna add in our spinach. We got fresh spinach today, so it's gonna take a little bit to wilt down. It's gonna look like way too much, but as you guys know, shrink shrinkage is real. Not just in the pool, but when you're cooking spinach as well. All right, guys, so we got a whole pound of fresh spinach in here cooked down nicely. We've cooked off the water, as you can see. The skillet's nice and dry, so spinach tends to expel quite a bit of water, so you wanna put it over medium-high heat until that water cooks off, at which point we're gonna begin seasoning. So I'm going in with a little flavor enhancement here, a little chicken bouillon powder, totally optional, but I like to kick it up a notch with that. We're gonna add a little garlic and herb seasoning, along with my all-purpose seasoning, or you can use a little salt and pepper or whatever your favorite all-purpose is at the house. Be generous with this stuff. This is low sodium, so you can go a little heavier. We're also gonna add a little smoked paprika and red pepper flakes. Next up, we're going in with about a quarter cup of sour cream and two blocks of room temperature cream cheese. The next ingredient we're using to take things to the next level is one of my favorites, boars and garlic and herb cheese. All right, so at this point, guys, once everything kind of softens up, you can take your spatula, start to break things up into smaller pieces. That way it melts and incorporates a little bit easier, a little faster. We're just gonna fold all of this together until the cream cheese and whatnot is evenly distributed. Then we'll add in the rest of our cheese, season to taste, and pop it in the oven. All 
All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add back in the bacon, along with some Parmesan cheese. Quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients for this recipe can be found in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. We're gonna hit it with a little fresh chopped parsley. Give that a good mix, and then we'll add in our mozzarella cheese, saving some to top it before it goes into the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so in goes the mozzarella. We got our heat on low at this point. Just gonna add a little bit here and then the rest is going right on top. Got us a nice cheesy spinach dip. The bacon's gonna add a little surprise texture as well as flavor, obviously. For those that don't eat pork, you can use beef bacon. The boars and cheese is adding a great flavor element. Got a little sprinkle of MSG from that chicken bouillon powder to excite the palate. And man, I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting hungry. All right, so we got our oven preheated to 375. We're gonna top this with a light layer of freshly shredded mozzarella cheese. It's gonna brown up beautifully. And who doesn't like more cheese, right? We're here for a good time, not a long time. A little bit more mozzarella. Now, if your casserole dish is overflowing, you're gonna to wanna to put this over top of a sheet pan so your oven doesn't get messy, but I think we're in good shape here. I'm gonna pop that on in for about 15 to 20 minutes. All right, my friends, as promised, we're making our own corn tortilla chips today to go with this dip. All you need is some tortillas and a sharp knife. I'm gonna make one cut right down the middle then another cut right across to give us quarters, basically. This is what we're gonna fry up, put it in some 350 degree oil for a couple minutes, hit it with some salt. All right, the oil is up to 350 degrees. These tortillas will fry up faster than me at an open bar wedding. So keep your eyes on them. Literally just a few seconds is all it takes. By the time you drop the last one in, the first one's already done. So just do them in batches. Don't overcrowd the skillet. You kind of take a, some tongs or a spider or something like that and flip them around. Make sure they're cooking evenly. Then literally after a minute or two, they're done. After they're nice and crispy, we're gonna add them to a wire rack, allow them to drain. And as soon as they come out of the oil, you wanna hit them with some kosher salt or some pink Himalayan sea salt. And just repeat that process until all of your chips are fried up. And that, my friends, is how we're looking fresh out of the oven. Hit the top with a little fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color. This is the part where I say, brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys. Looking good. The only thing left to do is let this cool and get in there for a taste test. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, guys, moment of truth. Looking a little hot, but what the hell? <laughs> 